fish testing itself is a sophisticated type of molecular testing that um, we have recently launched in this new laboratory called Nebraska Collaborative Laboratory. And we will be studying uh, samples from patients' tumor specimens. With fish testing, we use certain probes to look at different parts of the DNA. Fish analysis can be used for pinpointing different gene mutations that then will determine if a patient will respond to a therapy that is targeted to that particular gene. It can be used as a diagnostic adjunct. It can be used to determine prognosis. And it can also be used to direct or predict um, therapeutic response. It makes a tremendous difference in the care of patients with cancer. Fish analysis is also an incredibly valuable tool to assist in making the diagnosis, an accurate diagnosis, of the type of tumor a patient has to begin with. And then subsequently, that also plays into their receipt of the most defined or personalized therapy for that patient. So one of the markers that we're currently testing for is called HER2, and it is seen in a subset of patients with breast cancer. It's associated with a more aggressive behavior um, for some patients, but it also indicates that these patients will be responsive to a particular therapy called Herceptin. It's a rather unique collaboration between an academic medical uh, system and a community system um, to uh, develop a method to deliver care that is seamless and complete and not fragmented like we have today. Uh, the overall collaboration goes beyond the laboratory that we're talking about here and goes into really a new mode of delivering care. Our goal is to bring state-of-art technology to not just all Nebraskans but everyone in the region. But it's important for people to know this isn't just technology, uh, this is expertise. And we're very fortunate to have some people who are the world's experts in tumors and cancer diagnostics. And together, that's what makes this a very special effort. There are some tests that are uh, very complicated that we now are forced to send uh, out of the state um, to uh, perhaps California or New York. Um, that we'll be able to bring in to our own area, enhancing the ability to deliver turnaround time and to work more carefully one-on-one -on -one with physicians that are ordering those tests. It's often hard to say um, in a report what you really think the doctor needs to know and to properly emphasize that and talk about nuances or concerns you may have. So I think those aspects of com communications are definitely improved. In many cases, the pathologists are the doctors to the doctors. And in most cases, the patients don't ever know what we've been doing. But that, that's okay to us because we know that patient care is what matters, but it's delivered by our colleagues. And our job is to support our colleagues. And by supporting them, we know the patients are getting the best care. We're competing with centers like Chicago and New York with tens of millions of people. And in order for us to be able to bring the technology that our patients need, you have to have larger numbers of patients. And in order to have larger number of patients, you need to have integration between health systems. And in this case, TNMC and Methodist brings that uh, higher population, that greater number of patients that we need in order to make this project work. In the United States right now, there are three examples of academic community system collaboration and that we are one of the three. Uh, we've also been told by people who are national observers of these kinds of activities that at the laboratory level, we are the farthest along in collaborating on laboratory practices. When you talk about and research and understand the molecular world, you find that it is very resource intensive. The technology is very advanced. It's very expensive. And so we started to have a discussion. Is it possible for us to work together so that we form some type of entity and move in that direction together? Therefore, the member owners then put together a governance committee 
to say, help us figure out how we can actually launch the Nebraska Collaborative Laboratory. And that's how we got started. And what really drove that was knowing if we did it together, we would save money, but probably most importantly, we would help to reduce the cost of care in our community. And now here was another opportunity to bring that business in-house. And so it became a win-win for everyone. I think that we're only beginning to see what can happen in cancer. There have been dramatic cures uh, with very low toxicity, unlike what we do now with many of the agents that we use that have a lot of collateral damage. That's the beauty of these new um, targeted therapies is that they, they can work very, very effectively without enormous side effects. These two large institutions have come together with a focus on the patient and our community. And what we can do to continue to improve care for patients by working together. It also serves as a platform for other things that might come down the road that have yet to be defined, yet to be declared, but we know that there'll be more opportunities in the future, especially since we've made this one a successful launch. I've never been involved with a project with, of this complexity, with this number of people all pushing and pulling to move it forward in the way that we are working together. It's very impressive, it's very rewarding. I think the whole community should be uh, proud of what is taking place.